four years, from 1941 to 1945, the United States concentrated its energies on the conduct of a demanding global war. The American people turned their full attention to the job of winning that war. In the Pacific Asiatic Theater, U.S. fighting men pushed the enemy back to the shores of Japan itself by the summer of 1945. In early August, the U.S. brought the enemy finally to the point of surrender after some 44 months of the most grueling warfare. A number of Japan's largest cities lay in ruins. The course of aggression on which the Japanese nation had embarked some 14 years earlier had led to a tragic end. On a day most Americans will never forget, August 15, 1945, the Third Fleet was in waters near Japan. Its commander, Admiral Bull Halsey, was impatiently waiting for the news which all the world was anxious to hear. I have received this afternoon a message from the Japanese government in reply to the message forwarded to that government by the Secretary of State on August 11th. I deem this reply a full acceptance of the Potsdam Declaration, which specifies the unconditional surrender of Japan. In the reply, there is no qualification. Finally, the all-important message came through by wireless. The enemy had surrendered. The war was over. Every man in the fleet, from admiral to able-bodied seamen, felt an immense surge of relief. After nearly four years, U.S. had won the victory. On August 30th, American troops of the 6th Marine Division landed on Japanese soil at Yokosuka Naval Base, south of Tokyo. U.S. officers quickly assumed control of the installation and issued orders on procedure to the Japanese officers who had been in charge. With U.S. command firmly established, the Stars and Stripes was raised over the Japanese homeland. A Japanese delegation arrived early on the morning of September 2nd, 1945 to make the unconditional surrender official. The Japanese contingent faced an impressive array of Allied officers. The ceremonies were directed by the new Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces in Japan, General MacArthur who took a firm attitude toward the conquered people. We are gathered here, representatives of the major warring powers, to conclude a solemn agreement whereby peace may be restored. It is my earnest hope, and indeed the hope of all mankind, that from this solemn occasion, a better world shall emerge out of the blood and carnage of the past, a world founded upon faith and understanding, a world dedicated to the dignity of man and the fulfillment of his most cherished wish for freedom, tolerance, and justice. I now invite the representatives of the Emperor of Japan and the Japanese government and the Japanese Imperial General Headquarters to sign the instrument of surrender at the places indicated. Representing the Emperor at the proceedings which concluded the costliest war in world history was Japanese Foreign Minister Mamoru Shigemitsu, who formally surrendered for his country thus committing Japan to accept the Potsdam Declaration, calling for the complete disarmament and surrender of all military forces. 
A few hundred U.S. servicemen witnessed the climax of four years of war in the Pacific. That war ended officially at eight minutes past 9 a.m. on September 2nd, 1945. Let us pray that peace be now restored to the world and that God will preserve it always. These proceedings are closed. The formal surrender of the Japanese nation on the deck of the Missouri was followed by other dramatic surrender ceremonies. On Rota Island and the Marianas, one of the many groups of Japanese troops on bypassed islands gave themselves up to the victorious Americans. Great quantities of Japanese weapons and equipment were taken over by the GIs and the enemy soldiers taken into custody, preparatory to being returned to Japan. The last man off Wake Island, Colonel Walter Baylor, was the first man back. The Japanese garrison surrendered the island to U.S. forces on September 4, 45, three years and eight months after other Japanese troops had seized the island in a battle which will live long in the memory of all Americans. Singapore was the setting for the principal ritual in Lord Mountbatten's command. The Union Jack flew proudly over this British colonial city which had been beaten into submission in early 1942. In the Philippines, General Jonathan Wainwright arrived after a quick flight from Japan to accept the surrender of the Japanese forces in those islands. Forces commanded by General Tamayuki Yamashita. The ceremony at the Philippine summer capital at Baguio in northern Luzon took just 11 minutes. The once feared Tiger of Malaya surrendered the remnants of his army in the Philippines. This was a long-awaited moment for General Wainwright, who had surrendered the Philippines 40 months earlier, and for Britain's General Percival, who had surrendered Singapore. Immediately following the brief ceremony, the Japanese commander and his party were taken away as prisoners of war.